Amazingly enough, I found a couple of videos on Vidme that I can respond to, which means that the vast majority of videos I do won't be YouTube specific. If anyone finds anything else in my wheelhouse that I've missed, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to go after them. But anyway, here we get a campus apologist trying to explain their beliefs on sin, but there are even better questions that need to be addressed. So, can you stop sinning? And if not, why not? God desires to save you this day. Save me from what exactly? I mean, that's an honest question. After all, God set up the system where I'm damned from birth. He could change that at any time, but he doesn't. Why am I supposed to be impressed that he offers to save me from something he created in the first place, especially when being saved condemns me to eternal mental slavery? No thanks! So think about whether or not what I'm saying to you is true or not, because it's either true or it's false, but it's not just my belief. It's one or the other. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. And that is true. But how do we determine if it's true or false? We have to go with the evidence, and frankly, there is no evidence that what you believe is true. It doesn't matter how those beliefs make you feel. That has nothing to do with whether a proposition is factually correct or not. And of course, that's something that theists simply don't care about. They're only in it for the feels. You're just patronizing me now, aren't you? I think it's funny how many people are paying attention to this guy. He's not exactly drawing a big crowd, is he? I mean, there are a couple of people on the sidelines, but mostly he's just talking to himself. No. Oh. Any quit? You want to say anything before you scoot? Yeah, does that mean I can do whatever I want and I'm forgiven? Yeah, that's a good question. Too bad you won't have a good answer, at least not one that will make sense to a genuine skeptic. But go ahead. Let's see what you've got. I would, let, me, let me answer it in a, two steps here. Number one is, God will forgive any sinner. Not true. According to Mark 3, 22 through 30, and Matthew 12, 22 through 32, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. Are you really that unaware of your own theology? Because Jesus is divine, and so his sacrifice can forgive any sin. But that really is a silly idea when you think about it. How does it make any sense to think that God can sacrifice himself to himself to forgive sins that he could just arbitrarily forgive in the first place? How does that make any sense whatsoever? Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Oh. Huh? Think, McFly. Oh. Think. Now, if you're saying, hmm, I can go about sinning all that I want to because I'm covered by that, it would be like a young man, a boy, who goes out camping with his father. They set up camp on the shore of the beach, and Dad says, Son, whatever you do, I'm going to take a nap. Don't go into that, that, life, that boat because it's alligator-infested water. Kid says, Okay, Dad. Dad falls asleep. The kid starts looking at the paddle boat, and he thinks, I think I'm going to give it a go. He goes out into the middle of the lake. All of a sudden, a bunch of alligators start swirling around. He gets a little panicked. He gets rocked. He tips over and passes out. The next thing you know, he wakes up with his head on the sand, looking up at the sky. He turns and looks over, and his dad has been clearly mauled by alligators, and he immediately knows, wow, I blew it, and my dad jumped in to rescue me. He saved me from that. Now, imagine if that young man then said, thanks, Dad, and then he went back out in the boat and did it again. You would say, he doesn't esteem the sacrifice of his father. Bad analogy, because God suffers nothing, or at least needs to suffer nothing, to save us from the sins that he himself imposed upon us. The whole Jesus sacrifice thing is just bad theater. It reminds me of people who make supposed prank videos using paid actors. None of it matters. Nobody gets hurt. It's all a scam meant to fool the rubes into forking over their hard-earned money. This is not impressive, especially when you realize that, according to your religion, God is all-powerful. He didn't have to do what he did. He didn't have to create Adam and Eve as he did. He didn't have to set up the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as he did. 
Adam and Eve didn't know any better. They didn't know it was wrong to disobey God until they'd already disobeyed God. And by that time, it was too late. Then God decided to condemn all of humanity for the failure that he himself set up so that he could get all of us years down the line in a catch-22 where we all have to grovel for his forgiveness for sins that we had no choice but to commit. We're sinful because God made us that way, knowing full well how we turn out. Your God is a real jerk, sorry. When you understand that Jesus actually died for you in a very nasty, humiliating way, you don't want to sin anymore. But you have no choice. Besides, Jesus did it voluntarily. Jesus had a bad weekend for your sins, knowing full well that he'd rise from the dead and ascend into heaven, and it wouldn't really matter. Besides, if Jesus' death forgave your sins... Why do you have to keep asking for forgiveness? If you're already forgiven, why do you have to keep groveling? What sense does that make? See, that's really the problem I have with these people. They're just not making any sense. Now, that girl might have asked a follow-up question that got cut out because it made him look bad. I mean, I know I certainly would have. The whole sin forgiveness thing is really idiotic. You have a supposedly all-powerful and all-knowing God who specifically sets up a system where his entire creation is screwed on purpose so that we all have to continually grovel for his forgiveness, but only at a price so he can continue to get his jollies as his followers kiss his ass for all of eternity. And this is a worthwhile God? Seriously? No, this god is a dick, a complete jackass, a reprehensible monster. And of course, there's no reason to think that this god actually exists. It's all mythology made up by men in robes and funny hats so they can have power over the people and make money from their delusions. And unfortunately, it's worked for thousands of years. Luckily, it's not working all that well anymore. More and more people are just walking away from the faith because it makes no sense. I'm sure that young girl just walked away from the microphone, shaking her head, thinking this guy was an idiot. And I've got to agree. He's just a delusional frontman for a religion that preys on the gullible. And I'm sure he just doesn't know any better. I'm sure he hasn't thought about how ridiculous the things coming out of his mouth actually are. But as they say, think, McFly, think. It can't hurt might actually do you some good. Give it a shot sometime, won't you? Everything changes.